Devils of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment all day long when you set your radio dial to NBC. Listen for Double or Nothing, and you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Yes, Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Listen, and you'll agree. And then there's the program of the heart, Strike It Rich. The grand entertainment that Warren Hull brings you every day on Strike It Rich is just what the doctor ordered if you suffer from the housework blues. From Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you welcome travelers and interviews with the many interesting guests who each day pass through the Windy City. And then for more fun, listen for Bob and Ray, those two zany comics. Then there's music and charm with Dial Dave Garraway. So remember, every day, Monday through Friday, chase your blues away with the wonderful daytime programs on this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, here's today's adventure with the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Nighthawk. <laughs> It is 12.30 on a Friday night early in June, 1948. In the town of Tipton, Texas, the graduation dance at Carroll College has been over for half an hour. Two miles outside town, a car drives toward a small airfield, used during the day as a landing place for a few private planes. The field and the single hangar are dark as the car rolls to a stop on the road bordering the field. Oh. You're not tired, are you, June? My feet are. That Will Appleton... It's your fraternity, Brother Todd. Why haven't you taught him to dance? You step on your toes. I just don't see how any boy could be so graceful on a football field and a... Oh, well. <laughs> Who wants to talk about Will Appleton, anyhow? It's a nice dance in spite of him. Mm-hmm. And nice out here, too. Mm-hmm. Moon makes everything so bright. I like the half moon. Everybody's always talking about how pretty a full moon is, but... What's the matter, Jimmy? Well, somebody's coming down the road. Oh, probably some hand off one of the farms walking home. Looks like he's coming right toward us. Now, Joan, you just imagine things. He'd go on past. Todd. Hmm? He's got something over his face. Like some kind of mask. Yeah, yeah it looks like a stocking with holes cut out. He's got a gun, Todd. Get out. Hey, what is this? Shut up. I don't want to hear nothing out of either of you. This is a stick-up. Oh. Get out of the car. Come on. I'm getting, I'm getting. Are you too, sister? Not that way. Slide over and get out this side. What do you want? Give me a pocketbook. There's no money in it? Give it to me. Now look here, you can't do it. I told you to shut up. Now give me a wallet. That's better. What's the matter with you, sister? You got nothing to cry about? All right. Now both of you start walking down that road and don't look back. Come on, Johnny. Don't be fair. Wait a minute. You, start walking down the road alone. You're going to stay with me, sister. No, oh, look, you can't do it. Start walking, I'll blow your head off. It's all right, I'm going. Faster. Stop! No, I get moving. Okay, sister. Now you and me are going to take a little walk. Let go of me. Oh, babe, that way, baby. You and me. No, no. Shut up. Get away. I say, shut up. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I gotta get out of here! Johnny! Johnny! Oh, Johnny! He's all right, Johnny. He's gone here. Yeah, let, let, let me help you, Johnny. Let me help you. Take me home! Oh, Johnny! Oh, no! Todd Miller put the girl in his car and drove back to town. After taking her to the hospital, he notified her parents and the sheriff. 
Sheriff Wilson dispatched deputies to the scene of the robbery and requested assistance from the Texas Rangers. As soon as he had spoken to the girl, the sheriff drove back to the airfield with Todd. Minutes later, Ranger Jace Pearson, who was assigned to the case, reached the field. Howdy, Sheriff. Oh, uh, this Todd Miller, Jace. Howdy, Ranger. He's the boy who was held up. The report said you weren't able to identify the man who robbed you, is that right? Yes, sir. He had a black stocking over his head. I could only see his eyes. Where's the car you were driving, Todd? I left it in town. Sheriff brought me back here. If you're thinking about Prince, Jace, I reckon we're out of luck. Todd here says the fella had on gloves. Uh-huh. How about the girl? She hurt bad? She'll be all right. Shaken up quite a bit, though. And he must have hit her an awful whack. Doc thinks her jaw might be broken. I shouldn't have done what he said. I, I should have stayed with Joni. You did just what you had to do, son. I don't reckon you had much choice. Todd, could you see which way he headed after he left the girl? Well, I'm not sure, but I thought I saw him running across the field toward the hangar. And then after I got Joni into my car, I saw a car drive out from behind the hangar and start off down the road. Any idea what kind of a car it was? Well, it looked like an old jalopy. I was too far away to see what kind. It was going pretty fast, though. One of my deputies found some fresh oil stains over by the hangar, Jay. And yeah, we'll go over in a minute and take a look. Todd, I want you to try to remember anything you can about this man. Anything. Well, it happened so fast that there's not much about him I remember. Well, how tall was he? Well, I'd say about my height. Can you describe his voice? Well, he never talked out loud. Just whispered. A, a real hoarse whisper. Anything else? Well, the way he walked right up to the car, like he'd been waiting for us. Just walked up and made his... Get out. Uh-huh. All right, Todd. I think that'll be all. Ranger, you think I could get back to town soon? I'm kind of worried about Joan. It's all right with the sheriff. He can send you back in his car with one of the deputies. You can come along with me, Sheriff. Sure, Jace. We'll drive over to the hangar and have a look at those oil spots first. You know, just let me tell my deputy. Mm. Uh, Charlie. Well. You take Todd back to town in my car. I'll be with the ranger. Uh, th thank you, Sheriff. Uh, thanks. He sure looks like a tough one, Jason. Yeah, but I got a hunch we can narrow it down to one of your local boys. How do you figure that? Well, for one thing, the way he was so particular about keeping his face hidden and whispering to disguise his voice. Mm, it does sound like he wanted to make sure he wouldn't be recognized. But it might have been some stranger who just didn't want to take chances on getting his description broadcast. It could be a stranger except for one thing. The fact that he was well enough acquainted with the town to know where couples might be likely to park after a dance. Mm, it's more like a little... KTXA to Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead, KTXA. The sheriff's office has received a call that man in stocking mask has just held up a couple at Carroll College football field. Man shot, possibly dead. Request this information be relayed to Sheriff. Football field straight along this road on the outskirts of town, Jace. Yeah. 10-4. Sheriff is with this unit. Unit 10 proceeding to scene at once. Four minutes after we received the radio call, we were approaching the college football field. We saw a car sitting in the center of the parking area and 10 or 12 people grouped around something on the grass a little distance away. A man standing near the car beckoned to us urgently. Pulled up a few feet away from him. Uh, howdy, Sheriff. The Ranger. Uh, Snyder's my name. Cliff Snyder. I heard the shots from my house over there. It's an awful thing. Just awful. You want to show us something, Mr. Snyder? Yeah, the, the boy. He's lying over here. I think he's dead. Where is Mr. Snyder? Uh, right around the corner of the car. Uh, uh, there. Yeah. Such an awful thing. A young boy like this and so much blood. I've never seen so much blood. Not in all my life. Is he dead? Two bullets in his chest. He didn't have much of a chance. I wish he was dead. That's why I wouldn't let nobody come too close till you got here. It's awful. Just awful. Is the girl with those people over there? That's right. Somebody put a coat down on the grass for her. She get shot too? No, no, no. But she got hurt a little. Uh, told us she ran away when this fella shot the boy. Uh, run toward the football stands. Uh, tripped and hit her head. Jason, she's hurt bad. We'll have to get her to a dock ourselves. I know the ambulance had to go over to Cedar Falls on an emergency. Let's get over and see her. Who is the girl? Uh, Julie Thomas. Uh, works in the drugstore. Uh, she don't know the boy's dead. You know the dead boy's name, Mr. Snyder? Uh, no, no, I don't. Uh, seen him around town, though. But I reckon you'll have to get his name from Julie. Uh-huh. Will you let us through, folks? Uh, let, let us through, please. All right, will you stand back, please? Julie. Julie, how you feeling? My, my head hurts a little. Is Johnny all right? I mean, look at your head, miss. I, I've got to know about Johnny. They wouldn't let me go to him. I'm sure he's hurt bad. 
How bad is Johnny hurt? Now, now, Julie, you just relax. Miss, we don't like to ask questions at a time like this, but there are a few things we have to know. He, he shot Johnny. Johnny shouldn't have fought with him. What's Johnny's last name? Gordon. I, I, I told Johnny not to fight with him. Julie, is Johnny's home here in Tipton? No. Spartanville. Do you remember anything about the man who shot Johnny? Something that might help us identify him? I saw his face. You what? He he made us get out of the car. And then he, he took my pocketbook and Johnny's wallet. Johnny started to fight with him. He pulled the mask off the man's face. You know the man, miss? Not his name, but I've seen him around the drugstore. He works at the dairy, I think. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Yes, I... I'll never forget him. We'd like you to come to the sheriff's office in the morning and make a written statement. We may need you to identify the man if we find him. I'll identify him. I... What's the matter? Well, I just remembered. This man who shot Johnny uh, around the drugstore, I've, I've heard people call him Red. Does he have red hair? Yes. Yes, he does, and kind of a crooked nose. Thanks, miss. That could help a lot. Will you let me go to Johnny now? Julie. Johnny's... Dead, isn't it? I'm sorry, miss. Dead. We were going to be married. Julia, I, we I, I think you... We were going to be married in September. We were going to have a big wedding. I always wanted a big wedding. Come on, Julie. We'll take you to a doctor. You had a pretty bad bump on the No, I... I want to go home. Is anybody there who can take care of you? My father's on the road. He's a salesman. How about your mother? She died a long time ago. Well, then maybe... Please. Please, I want to go home. I don't want to see any people now. If, if I need anybody, I'll call the lady next door. Yeah, we'll take you home. The sheriff's right. You should see a doctor first. All right. Ranger? Yes? You sure Johnny's dead? You sure? Yes, miss. I'm afraid so. I see. Oh, Johnny. Johnny. As soon as the justice of the peace arrived, we drove Julie to a doctor. He said she'd be all right, so we took her home and told her we'd phone her when we needed her. Sheriff and I spent the rest of the night checking on the lead Julie had given us. We learned that a man named Ernest Crockett, sometimes called Red, had worked for the dairy until a week before when he was fired. At seven that morning, we found out that Crockett lived in a room above a feed store. We got a search warrant and went there. I sure hope Julie's got the right man. She gave a pretty positive identification. Yeah, but she was excited. She might have seen a man with a broken nose and thought it was this red. It shouldn't take us long to find out if she's right. As soon as we get Red down to your office, we'll call Julie and have her try to identify him. You mean if we find Red, we could have trouble doing that? Uh huh. This is as good a place as any to start. Mm. It should be the room. Try it. You reckon he skipped? Maybe. We'll get back to the car. I'll ask headquarters to put out an all-points bulletin on him. Yeah, if he has gone anywhere, it's a cinch he hasn't got far. Murder took place at 2.30. That'd only leave him... Hold it, to... Sheriff. Hmm? Somebody coming up the stairs. Yeah, that could be Crockett. Stay on your toes. He might try something. If he's our man, I almost hope he does. Shh, careful. What's this all about? You read Crockett? Yeah, what do you want? We'd like to ask you some questions. Who said you can come in here? This? Mm, search warrant, huh? Okay, what do you want to know? Put your hands over your head. Huh? Frisk him, Sheriff. Yeah. Uh, nothing on him, Jase. What'd you expect to find? Where were you last night? Out. Uh, Where? All around town. I'm the restless type. Hate to stay in one place too long. Were you with anybody? No, I don't like crowds much. All right, Crockett, you're coming with us down to the sheriff's office. What for? We think you might have had something to do with two robberies and a murder last night. Me? Hey, oh, you're crazy. If you're innocent, you'll have a chance to prove it. What do you mean? Somebody got a good look at the killer. 
Let's go find out what happens when she gets a look at you. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Friends, permit me a serious word. Think now of those families, more than 2,000 families, who were made homeless by tornadoes. In six states, thousands of people are picking through the rubble of their homes. You would help them if you could, I know that. And you are helping them through your American Red Cross. Even as I speak to you now, your Red Cross is there, feeding and sheltering the homeless, caring for the sick and injured. Your Red Cross has made an initial allocation of $1 million for emergency relief. And that is only the beginning. So great is the destruction, so great is the need, your Red Cross has had to increase its $85 million fund goal by $5 million. After the emergency period has passed, there will be homes to rebuild and people to restore to health and livelihood. You, your family, and your home were spared. Help those who weren't. The need is great. The need is now. So answer the call, and please give generously through your American Red Cross. Now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Nighthawk. We took Rocket to the sheriff's office and left him with a deputy. Then I phoned Julie Thomas. There was no answer. The sheriff and I drove to her house and found it locked. The woman next door told us Julie had left early that morning for a nearby town of Spartanville to stay with a girlfriend. After some persuasion, the woman gave us the girlfriend's name and address. We went to Spartanville and located the house. I still don't figure it, Jace. Why would she want to skip out like this without letting us know? Mm, she was pretty upset last night, Sheriff. Chances are she still is. Yeah, but there's something funny about this, and I don't like it. I can't say I do either. Who's there? Ranger Pearson. Sheriff and I'd like to talk to you, Julie. Why'd you come after me? Why don't you leave me alone? Can we come in? All right. Your girlfriend around? She had to go out. Is that your coffee on the table, Julie? Yes. You want some? No, thanks. But you finish yours. Then we want you to come back to Tipton with us. I'm not going. Julie, what's the matter with you? Nothing. I... I... I just don't want to go back. I want to stay right here in Spartanville. We think we found the man we're looking for. We'd like you to identify him. I don't believe I could. But you told us last night you'd recognize him anywhere. I know it, but I can't remember anymore. But didn't you see the man who shot Johnny? I thought I did, but I guess I was wrong. All right, Julie. If there's anything we can do for you, just let us know. You're not going to make me come? We can't make you do anything if you don't want to do it. What are you going to do with the man you caught? I reckon we'll have to let him go. Nothing else we can do. Come on, Sheriff. Ranger? Uh-huh. Ranger, I... Oh, I'm scared. I'm so scared. Here, now, Julie, you just sit down. Right over here. Don't right. let him get me. Please don't let him get me. Let who get you? The man who shot Johnny. He told me if I said anything about him, he'd kill me. When was this? This morning, right after I got home. You mean he was at your house? No. No, he phoned. He said if I told, he'd kill me, no matter how long it took. And I'm so scared. Julie, your pocketbook that was taken, was there any identification in it? My driver's license. Uh Uh-huh. I can still hear his voice. Like a knife, it went right through me. Now, he can't do anything to you, Julie. He can. I know he can. Not if he's in jail. Well, he'll break out of here. He'll find me and kill me. Let me ask you something. Do you want to spend the rest of your life knowing that the man who killed Johnny is free? Ranger, please. You can be sure he won't stop with Johnny. He'll rob again, even kill again. I don't know what to do. I just don't know. It's up to you, Julie. We can't force you to identify him, but you're not being fair to Johnny if you don't. All right. I'll come with you. I'll identify the man who killed Johnny. Ranger, I 
won't have to stay long in the same room with him, will I? Only a couple of minutes, Julie, just so we can be sure you'll have time to recognize him. I'm afraid of him. His eyes and, and that red hair that stands up all over his head. I could see him so clear even when he was talking to me on the phone. Now, you don't have to be scared of a thing. You just identify him and we'll make sure he's behind bars for a long time. Won't he get the electric chair? Well, it'll be up to the judge. Go ahead in, Julie. Is, is he in there? No, he's in the next office. Oh. Yeah, I'll just go on through and see if everything's ready, Jason. Sit down, Julie. No, thank you. You don't have to be frightened about a thing. You keep saying that, but I'm still scared. I'm scared to death. I know you are. I wish there was some way I could help you not to be. You'll stay with me, won't you, Ranger? The whole time I'm in there with him? Sure. Sheriff and his deputy will be there, too. You don't have to worry. All set, Jason. Now, remember, Julie, don't say a thing while you're in there. Just look at him and listen to his voice. All right, Ranger. Stand up, Crockett. What's your full name? You know my name? What are you asking for? What's your full name? Ernest Crockett. Where do you live? Crockett. Okay, 245 Esperanza Street. You own a gun? Of course not. I never owned a gun in my life. That's enough, Sheriff. Come on, Julie. Take over, Charlie. Sit down, Julie. Here, take his chair. Thanks, I... I will sit down now. Was that the man you saw last night? No. Julie! You sure you didn't recognize him? I never saw him before in my life. But, Julie, the the red hair and the broken nose you told us about, he must be the one. How many times do I have to tell you? I never saw him! I never saw him! You know what I think, Julie? I don't care. He's not the man. I think you're not telling us the truth. You're going to prove it? You're going to make me say something I don't want to? Julie... I told you before, we can't force you to say anything. But sooner or later, we'll find other evidence against this man. When he comes to trial, you'll be put on the stand, under oath. I'll I'll swear I never saw him before. If the judge finds out you're lying, you could go to jail. Then I'll go to jail. Julie, I declare I wish I could talk some sense into you. You better go release Crockett, Sheriff, and we'll take Julie home. All right, I'll release you. Ranger, I wish... Forget it, Julie. You do whatever you feel you have to do. But even without your help, we're going to keep after this man till we get enough evidence to convict him. I, I want to do the right thing, but when I looked at his eyes... I, I've got to go away. I, I've got to leave here today. Well, if that's the way you want it. Where you figure on going? I, I don't know yet. Somewhere out of the state. I, I'll go up to Dallas first and tell my father what's happened. All right. We'll stay with you till train time. Almost ready, Julie? Just about. A few more things I want to get out of this hall closet. Well, you better hurry it up a little. It's 5.40 now. Your train leaves in less than an hour. You've still got time to change your mind, Julie. It's it's no use, Ranger. I... Oh, excuse me a minute. Hello? When are you going to get rid of the cops? What? It... Shortly. You better make it fast. I'm watching you, baby. And I'm going to be watching you. You make one break and... Understand? Yes. Just see you keep your mouth shut. Hello? Hello? What's the matter, Julie? You look pale. I'm all right. That was Crockett on the phone, wasn't it? Yes, Ranger. And he's he's not going to let me get away. No matter where I go, I'll have the feeling he's watching me. Chances are he will be. It's no use running, is it? It's never worked for anybody. If you still want me to, I'll identify him. Oh, that's fine, Julie. And I'll tell you now, the man I saw in the sheriff's office is the one who held us up last night. He shot Johnny. Come on, Sheriff. We're going to pick up Red Crockett. We took Julie to the sheriff's office, then went to Crockett's room. When we discovered he wasn't there, we alerted all deputies for a systematic search of the town. We informed KTXA that the sheriff and I would be cruising the streets. We just doubled back a second time into the Mexican section when I received a radio call. KTXA to Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead, KTXA. 
Deputy Sheriff has been wounded in gunfight at Estanita Cafe by a man believed to be Ernest Crockett. Hey. The subject escaped after resisting arrest. Holy smoke. 10-4, unit 10 clear. KDXA Austin. Where's that cafe, Sheriff? About a block from the railroad tracks. If you swing left at this next corner, you'll come right to it. Hang on. He's probably taken off in that jalopy of his. He has. It won't take us long to catch up with him. wonder which way he could have gone. Wait a minute. What is it? I just saw a man run into that alley up ahead. Does it lead anywhere? Down toward the freight yards. You can drive through to the tracks. He must be running pretty fast. There's no place he could have turned off. Yeah, this is as far as we can go in the car. Yeah. Hey, Jason, saw him. Your lights picked him up. Where? He, he ran toward that box car. Let's go. Take it easy around this box car. There he goes, Jace, climbing into that empty over there. Hold it, Crockett. <laughs> Give me that gun, Crockett. Are you dirty? Get up. <laughs> It's only your arm. It hurts. It hurts bad. Come on, Crockett. You were so anxious to have a train ride. Now I'm going to see you get one. All the way to Huntsville. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Later today, you will find more great entertainment all lined up for you on this NBC station. Next, it's The Big Show with a star-studded guest list and your unpredictable hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. And Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct The Big Show Orchestra and Chorus. Later tonight, be sure to hear the hilarious Phil Harris and Alice Faye show, featuring the comedy antics of Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, and Brother William. There's mirth and music with Phil and Alice and their delightful program. And remember, too, the Theater Guild on the Air will bring you another entertaining dramatization of an exciting play co-starring two of your favorite Broadway stars. Yes, Sunday is fun day on NBC because of the many fine shows sent your way to add to your listening pleasure. Later tonight, you'll want to hear Jack Parr and the $64 question as Jack asks the questions and gives away the money. So remember, for fine entertainment all the rest of the day, stay tuned to this station of the NBC Radio Network. Now for the conclusion of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Julie Thomas made a positive identification of Ernest Crockett, and ballistics evidence proved that Crockett's gun had killed Johnny Gordon. Crockett was indicted and on July 9, 1948, was found guilty of murder with malice. At three minutes past midnight on September 15th, 1949, Crockett died in the electric chair at Huntsville. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Cray will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Bert Holland, Betty Moran, Lou Krugman, Parley Bear, and Michael Ann Barrett. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, enjoy comedy, drama, and music on The Big Show on NBC.